guys, welcome. My name's Ann and I'm from Pearson Bell at Home. And today we're gonna work on this wall. Now I may bring you a little bit closer so you can see there are a ton of um, nail holes, screw holes, any kind of hole you can think of on this wall. And we're about to do some changes in here. And I don't wanna to have to re-skim this necessarily, but I do want a cool treatment on this wall. So I'm gonna show you how we do our schmear uh, here in the shop. But first we're gonna go ahead and sand this wall a bit because I wanna get rid of all these holes. Let me show you real quick how big these holes or how many holes we have that we wanting to hide. Okay, you guys, I've got you up close and personal with this wall. It's imperfect completely. I mean, this building is 100 years old. There's probably wallpaper there. I'm not gonna take it off or scrape it off. Um, we even have an electrical panel that I need to kind of camouflage. So we're just gonna do, like I said, we're gonna go ahead and sand this down so we can get that all nice and smooth. We've had some patches done, but no sanding. Um, we've got lots of little holes here. And at this point, not really gonna go ahead and um, fill those in um, unless I find I absolutely have to. I think we may use a little bit of crust today, but I'm gonna go the easy, lazy way, lazy route on this one. All right, so here we go. Let's go ahead and start sanding. First, safety is key. So I'm gonna use my safety goggles just in case something happens to pop out um, while I'm sanding. I'm not wearing a respirator. I do have this uh, our sander hooked up to our dry, our you know wet dry vac. So that's how I'm going to use this today. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> We're all finished. I would highly recommend if you're doing this in the house to have a vacuum cleaner attached to your sander. It just makes this process less messy for you. Of course, your wall may not be as awful as my wall. If you have just regular slight texture, you're A-OK. -okay. Go ahead and just kind of dust your wall off. You can take a Swiffer or a broom, just dust your wall. Um, I don't find it need any need to clean with a degreaser on your wall unless for some reason your wall is filthy then you want to clean it um, so now we have all of this nice and sanded so can you guys see let's actually get a close-up again okay you can see a lot more of the holes I do need to remove, there is a screw part still sticking out, so I'm going to try to remove it or push it further in with a hammer. So we'll go ahead and make sure and dust off any particles on our wall with a slightly damp cloth. I just want to get off some of the bigger um, or looser dust particles. Okay, so we've finished wiping down our wall and it's ready for our first schmear coat. So I've got, I like to use these flat styrofoam um, containers. I get them from the dollar store. You can get about 12 or 24, I don't know the pack. Anyway, it's cheap enough um, that I'll use them and toss them. Um, I've got a simple, straight, flat block of wood on this side. Um, this I got from Michaels, but you can use a two by four, um, just cut into two inch squares or four inch squares, whatever works best for you. It's really easy, I promise. So what you're going to do is you're going to stick, got a little bit of paint here, we're using uh, Vera at the Ballet from Paint Couture. We're going to put our block of wood in the paint and I'm going to scrape it off so I've got a little bit on there, okay? Add a little bit more. So what we're going to do is come over to our wall. I'm going to start at one corner and I'm just going to go across. See? Kind of like freaks you out at first. Trust me on this. You just gotta go with how it goes. You can go up and down, side to side. The more texture you have on your wall, the more um, textured this is gonna look. So depending on how little or as much texture you have, naturally in your wall will depend on how much kind of resides behind. Now you guys know we have all those kind of pit holes and things. They kind of stick up a little bit higher than the rest. So we'll see how we go as we go along. 
um, hopefully we can fill in a lot of those areas. All right, so let's just keep going. We're gonna go on this side now, and we'll go across. I go some down, and I'm gonna go over our electrical panel here because I wanna camouflage it. I don't want anybody to know or necessarily see it right away. That is a electrical plant panel. So we're just gonna put some schmear on that. And it may take a couple of coats or a couple of tries because it's pretty smooth. We want that to get on there. So we're getting a nice little bit there as well. So we're gonna continue with our pink here, which is Vera at the Ballet. It is our darker color that we're using today. We may come back to it a little later. So we're gonna continue with the schmear. We have our Panka Tour there at the ballet on the wall. We've got this all smeared on from ceiling to floor. We have it on here. Now there are still some whole areas that I'm not in love with. So I'm gonna kind of uh, try to camouflage those just a tad. So I have mixed up with a little bit of my Vera at the ballet, whatever we had left over. Literally, I was scraping the bottom. And I have mixed up some of our crust texture. It's a, a bit of a sandy texture to it. This is kind of how it, it looks. So we're gonna go ahead and use our putty knife here and just kind of smear some on the wall. We know we have those bigger holy areas. areas. And all it's going to do is just add a little texture to the wall. It's not going to affect it too much. So I just want to kind of hide some of those holes a little bit better because right now I feel like they're being accented because they protrude out just a hair. So we're going to continue filling in all these spots. And we may do a few random spots just so that it looks a little more random than purposeful on um, doing just these holes so it may go up and down a little bit and um, just kind of make it not so obvious what we're doing here so here we go now that this has had time to dry just a little bit it's not completely dry we're gonna go ahead and add our angelic color it's a lighter creamier color almost the same color as the wall until it starts to dry as the original part of the wall um, and we do have a fan blowing as well. We're trying to get this to dry as we go. So the faster it dries, the faster I can put my next coat on. You can certainly let it dry naturally, come back in an hour or so. Or if you want to do a little bit at a time, you can do one coat a day. It's up to you how you want to do this. So we're going to go ahead and continue with our second color. And I do notice that on some occasion, it's not filling in certain areas, so I will force it to so-called kind of fill in a little bit. So if I feel like there's a bare spot, I will fill that in on purpose. Like that one's not truly, finally got that in. So you just kind of have to finagle it around a little bit. We're gonna cover up a lot of the pink and our crust is still a little bit wet, which is okay on this application that we're doing today. We're starting on our final coat, which is Arctic White by Pink Couture. Now, you might see some darker areas. That is the Rose Gold Metallic by Pink Couture. I just kind of put them in there randomly in between some of my coats. So those are gonna be very barely visible. You're gonna see little bits of shimmer of Rose Gold coming through the Arctic White, which is our final coat, which you want to really kind of cover a little bit more than the other coats of colors that we used. We actually ended up using also candlelight. Actually, I lied, it's not candlelight. Um, we used Italian ivory, candlelight's a little darker. So um, we had run out, so we added the um, Italian ivory toward the bottom and a little bit here and there just to kind of add another color, another texture. I don't know if you guys can see that here, it's got a little creamier tone to it. So we're gonna continue finishing the wall with our arctic white so we'll go ahead and keep going and this coat i'll tell you instead of using the wood block i'm covering a little bit more so i'm going to do a little more of what i'm calling painting with a, um, a palette knife or 
painting with a um, mud knife. So we're basically just doing a little more coverage. So this is flexible. So it allows me to kind of press in and get into some more of the spots that really hadn't gotten any paint coverage on it before. So we're gonna continue. We've done most of the upper up here. There's a few spots that I need to add a little bit more to. We are running low on paint. I had to refill here. So we are gonna continue with Arctic White. And as soon as we're done with that and dry, I'll show you our next step. Now that we've allowed our Arctic White to completely dry, you can see there's just some touches of the rose gold and the other colors we use coming through. Now for our final coat, we are gonna use a four ounce sheer bliss and we are mixing that sheer metallic with my favorite German glass glitter. Now this is our German glass glitter. Now this is uh, French Magnolia. We just put about a teaspoon in our four ounce container of sheer bliss. It's just gonna give it a little extra shimmer, a little extra bang. Now it will settle to the bottom, so I'm going to need to kind of mix it and pick it up so that we can make sure we get those bigger pieces of glass glitter. Now, it is glass glitter, so this isn't something you're gonna rub your hands all over later. It's gonna have a little bit of a rougher texture. Now we do have fine German glass glitter, so it's not super rough. You're not gonna cut yourself with it, but it is just a little rough. So let's go ahead and start applying this to our wall. And we're using a chip brush because I don't wanna to have to wash a brush out later because I don't want the glitter going down my sink. All right, and what we're going to do is kind of a bit of a crosshatch motion so that we can make sure that we get all of our surface beautiful and shimmery. So this is gonna be super shimmery and super pretty. Again, you wanna scoop up that bottom glitter that we've got at the bottom of our container here. And we're just applying it on. So it gives it just a little extra boost of glitter, a little extra shimmer on our piece. So once we've got it all done and dry, I'll try to capture a great photo for you because it is hard to see on camera how absolutely shimmery it really is. You kind of have to be here. So if you were going to do this on a tabletop, I would suggest possibly, um, possibly doing a resin pour over it. You can also try doing a, um, several layers of a polyacrylic. Um, that can be a little tricky if you don't let it completely dry because that will sometimes can yellow on you. So we're gonna go ahead and finish this wall up real quick. Our wall is dry and complete and it's ready for my finishing touches such as my fixtures and my merchandise. I can't wait to see what you guys create with the schmear technique. We've done various projects here in our studio, such as furniture, our ceiling, and a few signs. But this is our first time really doing an entire wall with the schmear technique. So we do hope you enjoyed it. We also, this was our first time adding German glass glitter into our wall. So we wanted it to be a little more shimmery than just sheer bliss. We wanted to have a little more bang for our buck so we will show you how that looks as well when we wrap up, but I've got a lot of painting to do because there's a whole wall that needs to be done this way. So you guys have a great day and happy painting.